So we have a wall consisting of 100 mil brick on the outer surface with 10 mil mortar joints between the bricks, and then 200 mil concrete wall and a 10 mil insulating board inside, as shown in the figure below. The outside and the inside both air temperatures are 40 and 25 respectively. Determine the heat flux. So we're after heat flux, we know this is little q, and it's given in watts per meter squared, right, depending on the area through which heat is flowing. Determine the heat flux and the thermal conductivities are given as the brick is 0.2, the mortar is 0.6, the concrete is 0.8, and the plastic board is 0.15, all in watts per meter Kelvin. So let me first make this drawing 3D, I guess, so that we are looking at this thing as a whole. We know that the outer surface is at 40 Celsius, and we know that the outer the brick is on the outer surface, so that means that our 40 Celsius is here on the left-hand side of this image, whilst our 25 Celsius is on the right-hand side of the city. So that means that because we have that, we're going to have heat flowing from left to right, from hot to cold, like so, and we can calculate this by knowing the individual resistances. What else do we know? We know that if when my heat is traveling from here to here, it has through it has an option of going through the mortar or the brick. So we have a parallel system just there. And then when it gets here, then it has to go through the concrete. So it doesn't have any option anymore. So it has to go through the concrete. And again, same thing with the plaster insulating board. It has to go through the board. So that means we have a system in series and a system, uh, sorry, a parallel at the beginning. And then the rest of them are in series. All right. So that means that let's take this repeating unit here. Let's take this repeating unit here that has a the mortar of 10, thickness of 10, and brick of 75. And we can create you know, a sample. We can look at this as being a representative of the whole thing, because then all we need to multiply it by the area, this whole area here, that we don't know, to be able to solve this problem. So let's try to do that. First, I'm going to just draw the representation of what we we have there as a, a repeating unit, I guess. Let me see, let me see this bigger. So something like this. Horrible drawing, but Hopefully it gets the job done. So those, we have the concrete here. <clears throat> we have the brick. We have the, let's do this in gray. We have the mortar here, and we have the plaster board. We can do orange. So that's the repeat, repeating unit that we're gonna have. And then this repeating unit has a height of 10 and 75. These are in millimeters, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, and, and, and then we have the different thicknesses here. So we have 10, 100. 210. Cool. And then we have a arbitrary area because they're not given the area. So we're going to solve this with the area being our unknown. And then we can break this down to the same colors as before. Cool. So how are we going to go about solving this? Well, I'm going to create a little equivalent diagram that will contain all the thermal resistances for this problem. On this left hand side here, we have the 40 Celsius. On the right hand side we have the 25 celsius and we're going to have a resistance for the brick a conductive resistance for the mortar we're going to have a resistance conductive resistance for the concrete any for one for the what is it called again just insulating board just an insulator so just i for insulator cool right on let's do this so what's the resistance for the brick for the brick it will be the distance that he needs to cover the x divided by the conductivity of the brick in the area through which it's going through. And I'm going to do go ahead and say this area here, area equals one meter squared. Okay, so I'm taking, you know, we, we have the height of our repeating unit. It's going to repeat several times. We don't have the depth. We're going to say that this whole area here, this whole area here is one meter squared. So we're going to get a heat flux, which is what we're looking for. Um, my x, so this is 100. This is millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and do 100 times 10 to the minus 3 to have it in meters. The K for the brick is 1.2. And then the area there, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do, um, it has to be a ratio, right? Because we're going to have, if we look at this from this side here, what we're going to see is, we're going to see something like this. We're going to see the yellow part like so. And we're going to have the gray, which is the gray, the gray part like so. And then we know that 70, 75 here and then 10 here. So the ratio between them is going to be um, what we're interested in. So we know that the the brick is occupying 75 of that 85. So the ratio of one meter squared is going to be the 75 over 85. So that's going to be 75 over 85. And this is going to be the area. And this is per meter squared, like I said before. So unit-wise, we have unit-wise we have meters here. 
we have watts per Kelvin meters here, and we don't have anything here, right? Because we're not putting an area, right? We're putting a ratio between areas. So we're saying that for every one meter squared of area we have, we know that the ratio between 75 and 85 is going to be for the brick, and the mortar is going to be 10 over 85, right? So we don't really have one. Because we're assuming the area to be one meter squared, we can go ahead and put one meter squared if you want here. That's fine. And eliminate that, or we can carry that on with us. Either way works. So uh, the brick one is going to be off point. 0944, 944, and again, if I'm assuming the area of one, then that's straightforward. It's just going to be Kelvin or Watts, straightforward. Next resistance, next resistance is going to be the mortar. And for this guy here, same thing, XKA, my X is exactly the same, so it's exactly the same 100 millimeters. My K for the mortar is 0.6, so that is 0.6, and then my area is one, but I don't have the whole area with mortar, I only have a ratio of about 10 over 85 percent of that area covered with the mortar, right? So this gives me uh, 1.4, 166, and that is Kelvin per watts. Great. What else? We have the next the concrete, and the concrete is you know, the whole area is concrete, concrete, so that's easier for us. So resistance, collective resistance of the concrete. Again, X K um, area, or X in this case is 200, so 200 millimeters which is 200 times 10 to the minus 3, or 0.2 meters. The K for the concrete is 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and then here we have the full area, so don't have to use any ratios here. And this gives us 0.25, again, Kelvin per watts. Let me go ahead and make sure that we're reminding ourselves of this. Cool, and last, we have the insulator, so why? The distance it needs to cover is just 10, its uh, conductivity is 0.15, so the smallest so far, and it also covers the full area of 1. So this gives me 0 0.0666 Kelvin per watts. Amazing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to convert this system here into a simpler system with the equivalent resistance. Okay, I'm, what, I'm, what I'll be doing is I'll be converting this into... this, right, with a resistance, equivalent resistance there. And to find out what that is, I'm just going to do 1 over my R equivalent has to be equal to 1 over the brick in the mortar, right? And the brick was 0 .9, 0 0.094, so 0 0.0944 plus 1 over the mortar, which is 1.4166. And this gives me point. 88 Kelvin per watt. So that's the equivalent resistance of transforming those two guys into one single one. And the next thing I'm going to do is, you know, copy this again and simplify it once yet once more. And this time we only have only one single resistance here. So we only have one, only something like this. And to do that, all we need to do because they're all because these three are all in series, so we just need to sum them up. Sum up the resistances. So I'm going to be summing up the 0 0.88 with the 0 0.066 from the insulating board and summing that up with the brick, which is, sorry, not the brick, the concrete, which is 0 0.25. Right? And we get, if we sum this up, we get 0 0.4051. So this is the equivalent of having only one single thermal resistance for the whole thing. And now, for heat flux, that's the easy part, because if we want Q, that's just over the resistance that we have. Our resistance, in this case, is assuming a um, area of 1. So in reality, what we have is that this is a resistance but for every, we should have a meter square here. So to find the heat flux, it's straightforward. So we just get a Q, we take the difference at 40 minus 25, and we take and divide that by the 0. 0.4051. And that gives us 37.03. And that is in watts per meter squared. Right, so for every meter squared, I'm gonna have this amount of energy going through. Obviously, if we knew the whole area, and it's per meter squared because I assume that it's one meter squared in area. If we knew the whole area, then we need to see how many times, you know, this this unit that we created repeats. If it's going to be four times, like in the drawing, or if it's going to be more times, and then we can, you know, further specify this. But if we just want it per unit area, then the answer is going to be that regardless. Oops. Okay, later on, what we'll do is let's introduce the convective resistances on the inner and outer side of this wall, and then we see how that's going to affect our problem. If you have any questions, let me know, and if not, we'll talk soon.